السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم قال تبارك وتعالى كما ورد في سورة البقرة يا أيها الذين آمنوا كلوا من طيبات ما رزقناكم واشكروا لله إن كنتم إياه تعبدون صدق الله مولانا العظيم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقده من لساني يفقه قولي In the name of God the most compassionate ever merciful may God's peace and blessings be upon his prophet and messenger Muhammad Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala send, said in surah al-Baqarah O you who believe eat the good wholesome food he provided for you and thank Allah if you truly worship Him alone. With this, I open uh, our event for tonight. I am grateful to have such esteemed speakers to speak on building immunity and developing optimal health, optimal health during the pandemic. As all of us are being affected by COVID-19 in one way or another, we should keep our health in check. We need to make sure that we are healthy and people around us stay in the best health possible to fight this life-threatening virus. IONA, the Islamic Organization of North America, will be presenting tonight this special program on to discuss building immunity and developing optimal health uh, during the pandemic. We have uh, our esteemed uh, doctors who are health experts in the field, Dr. Muhammad Anif, Dr. Lakshmi, and Dr. Farooq, Dr. Naveed uh, Farooq. We are uh, grateful that they are able to join us uh, tonight to discuss this very important uh, subject. But before I turn the uh, microphone to our esteemed speakers, I would like to thank uh, Brother Sajid Sayyid, uh, an Iona community member who connected us with the esteemed uh, doctors, the health experts on this subject. Uh, Brother Sajid uh, always uh, speaks uh, of uh, uh, having uh, natural uh, supplements to build our immune system and through his connection to the doctors we are able to host uh, this event and uh, hear from our doctors. I would like to uh, begin with Dr. Uh, Dr. Anif. So a little bio about Dr. Anif before I give him uh, the microphone. Uh, Dr. Anif is a board certified uh, uh, geriat the geriatrician and uh, internist. He is currently the New York Region Medical Director of a very successful and innovative program focused on taking care of elderly patients with very complex medical problems. Uh, previously, he was the Chief Medical Officer of Healthcare Partners a New York City-based network of 2,500 primary care physicians. He has also extensive experience in, man in managing geriatric uh, programs in Montefiore Hospital in New York uh, City. Before I turn the microphone to him, I would like for our viewers first, I thank you all for coming and watching this uh, very important event. And we will be taking questions as we go along uh, through YouTube. And also, you can email your uh, question to, do we have the email address, Hamza? Uh, we will give you the email address. We'll put it on the screen as, uh, as uh, the speaker, inshallah, uh, present uh, his uh, uh, lecture, inshallah ta'ala. Uh, Dr. Anif, without any further ado, please... Uh, 
Thank you for coming. First of all, we appreciate uh, you and uh, the time uh, you have allotted for us. May Allah bless you. Jazakallah uh, khair, uh, brother Mustafa. Uh, it's uh, certainly my pleasure. Assalamu alaikum, my dear brothers and uh, sisters. Uh, it is my privilege here to be uh, on the call today to uh, be able to share a little bit about uh, the topic that uh, the Imam uh, here uh, mentioned about. You know, as uh, you will understand by the time we are done in the next uh, you know hour or so. Uh, this topic is very difficult, different from what you would hear from uh, our physicians. I uh, you know physicians uh, are trained to uh, treat diseases once they've happened. Uh, you know, with a little bit of focus on prevention. But uh, today's discussion is really going to be how to boost ourselves uh, and prevent problems from happening uh, rather than, you know, handle them once they've uh, happened. So uh, I'm excited about this topic. This is something that's very close to my heart and my wife's heart as well. And uh, we believe in, uh, you know, really the, a lot of the preventative uh, medicine and preventative uh, uh, supplementation. So I'm going to share my screen and run through a few slides that will help us to understand that, you know, good health, optimal health is really, there is not a magic bullet to it. Right? We all want to take this magical pill or, a bunch of supplements or something like that, and everything will be okay. But it's just not as simple as that. Uh, the good news is that uh, the basic fundamental thing that we need to do are quite simple. So we're going to spend a little bit of time. I'm going to spend a little bit of time to sort of lay the foundation. But uh, I'm actually more in, uh, uh, excited right after I finish to invite the next gentleman who is an expert on a topic that is top of mind to everybody here. So I'm going to share my screen and uh, go through a four, five or six uh, slides to help uh, lay the foundation uh, for um, uh, optimal health. Uh, uh, Brother Mustafa, could you confirm if you're able to see my slide, please? Yes, we're able to see your screen. Okay, wonderful. So today's uh, topic is uh, building immunity and optimal health uh, through during the pandemic. Um, so let me jump uh, right in here, right? The foundations of optimal health is really you need to lay the foundation on how to build it up from the ground up, right? So the basic, one of the most fundamental thing is dietary habits. As the Imam mentioned a few minutes ago, you know, uh, we are what we eat and food is medicine. And this is one of our fundamental beliefs. And so our dietary habits are probably the first solid building block that we lay uh, on to the, um, uh, the journey of building optimal health. Uh, the kind of foods we eat, organic whole foods, a reasonable amount of physical activity, uh, adequate uh, sleep and rest, and then uh, supplementation with good quality, uh, whole plant concentrates, not uh, inorganic uh, 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 supplements that you find uh, are quite widespread in the community. Um, so I'll unpack each of these uh, for about a minute each. Uh, the daily habits, right? Every single thing that we do from morning to evening impacts our health. Uh, the habits, how you eat, right? Um, when you eat, we eat well. You know, two to three meals a day, eat to satiety, uh, don't graze throughout the course of the day, avoid snacking, uh, consider time-restricted eating. This is a pretty fancy word for what you know, our prophet taught us uh, you know, uh, hundreds of years ago, where fasting regularly is a fantastic way to allow our body to heal and to restore good uh, optimal health. Uh, the foods you eat, what you eat matters, right? Uh, organic whole foods, and I'll define whole foods in a minute here, but uh, minimize the processing of foods and sugar. The foods, when you say whole foods, it, this is food that looks as close it, to its natural state as possible, right? When you go to Burger King or McDonald's and eat fish and that looks square, that's not how fish looks, right? So that's what I mean by as close to the natural state as possible. Every single step in the journey uh, adds one more layer of processing and reduces one level of um, effectiveness uh, of the nutritional status. Uh, if you're looking for meat, uh, look for grass-fed meat, uh, free-range chicken, uh, pasture-raised eggs, 
Uh, these are simple things. These are kind of foods that, you know, we all grew up with, but due to industrialization and uh, due to commercial, commercialization of the food uh, industry, many of these things that seem like they are good uh, are not necessarily exactly what they claim to be. So we need to be very careful about the kind of foods we choose to, uh, to ingest. Three Fs. There's something that you know, I love for you. Uh, I encourage all of you to remember. Uh, include more natural fats like olive oil, ghee, uh, into our foods. That's one of the Fs, natural fats. Uh, fermented foods like pickles. Uh, you know, there's a lot of different, every culture has its own uh, small variation of fermented foods. This is an important part of having a healthy dietary habit and adequate amounts of fiber, which comes from whole foods and vegetables, green leafy vegetables. And of course, you can also supplement with some uh, fiber also. Uh, when you use salt, uh, use natural salt as much as possible. You know, my wife and I, we personally use Himalayan pink salt and we think it actually adds to the taste, enhances the taste of food. And this is something that I cannot emphasize enough. I think this is a major problem, the next bullet, for most people that I meet, most patients, most family members, friends, colleagues, they do not drink enough water. The recommended is about a gallon a day. And it's important that we make sure that the water we drink is good quality, purified water, not bottled water that comes from, you know, mostly municipal water supplies. So it's important to have adequate hydration with uh, good quality purified water. Uh, other daily habits, reasonable physical activity, right? You know, you don't have to go buy these big gadgets because, you know, I know that what happens to most of the gadgets that people buy, they all end up becoming expensive uh, uh, cloth, uh, drying lines for clothes. But uh, just simple, basic walking, uh, running, if you want to invest in a small elliptical machine, about 20 to 30 minutes, five times a week is adequate for most people, unless you have specific goals, you're an athlete, you have different things. For average people, about 20 minutes, five times a week is a an excellent uh, rhythm to strike. We also is important to build and pay attention to mental health because our health is a composite of everything that we do. And uh, I mean, brothers and sisters, you know, our prayers and meditation, Salah five times a day, is an absolutely fantastic way to sort of ground us, bring us back, and bring us closer to optimal health. Uh, in addition to all the other benefits that obviously, you know, the Imam is in a better position to speak than I am. Adequate rest. About six hours is a good amount of sleep. Uh, minimizing caffeine or other stimulants, you know, a couple of hours before sleep time will help you to have a good quality of sleep uh, during the night. Uh, and it, because we're going to talk a little bit about supplementation, people have always asked me what are the supplements that can potentially help improve sleep quality. Magnesium supplements can uh, help to optimize uh, the sleep quality as well. So um, I want to play a quick video that talks about uh, why um, you know, supplementation is important. And uh, when I play it, uh, 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 Brother Mustafa, if you could confirm that you're able to hear it well, just so I can continue. The World Health Organization <laughs> says eat five to nine servings of fruits and vegetables daily. But do you know why? It's because fruits and vegetables help optimize health for today. Help support our immunity and energy levels. And fruits and vegetables help optimize health for tomorrow. They enhance quality of life. Help support our immunity. Why supplementation? Approximately 75% of the population worldwide is not eating the recommended amount of fruits and vegetables. Busy schedules, environmental factors that reduce plant nutrient levels, creating a gap between what we eat and what we need. So how do we help close this gap? You can do so easily through dietary and plant-based supplements containing phytonutrients. Wonderful. Uh, so that's a quick uh, video that talks about, you know, why the supplementation is uh, important. And um, so let me just get back to my presentation here. Um, okay, so this is a quick uh, infographic that uh, talks about um, uh, 
just how the industry has evolved in terms of processing food and why uh, we need the effective supplementation. You know, there's first of all there is over farming, right? The, our farms are like aggressively farmed multiple times a year. Uh, more plants, more dense crops. It just doesn't allow enough time for the soil to recoup its uh, nutritional capabilities and uh, avoids uh, uh, it doesn't get replenished enough in order to uh, fill the plants uh, with the nutrients that we need. On top of that, we have pesticides, insecticides uh, that further reduce the nutrition nutrient profile uh, of our foods. And then, you know, the food that is harvested uh, is many times, you know, stored. Um, they picked early and stored. Uh, and um, for, for years, sometimes I've uh, learned now, especially potatoes, sometimes they can be stored for years and then released in the market when it's uh, time for the businesses to make uh, money appropriately. The fruit is rapidly ripened uh, using ethylene gas. There's, you know, there's, I don't know, there's dozens and dozens of different things that the food industry has uh, concocted to make it more profitable for them. But in the process, they have really stripped the food that we eat of the nutritional value. And then they obviously put it through a processing that can, you know, include scanning, um, choosing, all kinds of different things, preservatives. So by the time the food reaches our table, uh, what we're eating looks like food but has really been stripped of uh, much of its nutritional content. And of course, our current lifestyles with, you know, information overload, travel, stresses, carbon monoxide, inhalation as we drive back and forth from work, all of this adds to the fact that we are not really absorbing uh, the kind of nutrition that we do uh, need and um, the food uh, needs to provide. Okay, so I'm going to talk about how we can fill this gap. You know, we heard in the uh, video a minute ago that you can actually uh, uh, cover this gap with some effective uh, uh, strategy. The way I like to look at it is everybody uh, on this particular uh, conference, uh, everybody needs a basic foundational supplements that starts the, um, the journey to where you can start building on it uh, eventually to create the optimal supplementation strategy for yourself. So everybody needs uh, a good supplement that has a combination of micronutrients, macronutrients, and uh, the plant derived phytonutrients. So that's the first brick that you lay in the uh, foundation for your optimal uh, supplementation. On top of that, you can add uh, omegas, you can add uh, protein supplements, and then there are targeted supplements. Uh, which you can add on based on if you have a joint situation, you can add a joint health. If you have uh, you know problem with digestion, there are supplements uh, that are appropriate for that. Vision, memory, uh, weight management, etc. So you have to lay the foundation, and on top of that foundation, you build uh, the supplementation strategy for yourself. Today, we're going to spend a lot of time on how you can uh, create a good strategy for supplementing to boost your immunity. And uh, we are privileged to have uh, one of the top experts in the country on this particular topic uh, to talk to us who's currently managing a lot of patients. Uh, and uh, so I just will add one more slide on, on the supplementation strategy and uh, turn it back. So the, with the focus of immunity, one of the important things that we need to do is to control everything in our environment that is, in, uh, that is damaging our health and potentially decreasing our immunity. One of the most important things is the air we uh, breathe in, right? Uh, you know, there are studies that show the air quality uh, inside the house is worse than quality outside the house in many places because of our heating system, the vents, the ducts, and a range of other factors. I won't go into it today, but it's important that you identify and get a good air purification system uh, for your own uh, household. Same thing with the water. I talked about it a few minutes ago, high quality purified water, uh, at least a gallon a day is what I recommend. Obviously, needless to say, no smoking, uh, no alcohol, and uh, focus on adequate stress relief with meditation, with prayers, meditation, getting adequate sleep. These are all the external irritants that uh, decrease your immunity. So we need to control as many of these variables as possible. And then the supplementation. I've listed a few here. But uh, I know we're going to hear a lot more from Dr. Farooq. 
So with that, I will uh, turn it back to our, our uh, brother Mustafa to uh, invite uh, Dr. Farooq back up. Uh, thank you, Dr. Anif. Uh, we now move to Dr. Farooq, uh, who will uh, enlighten us uh, about this uh, subject. Let me just give you a brief, uh, a brief uh, bio about uh, Dr. Farooq. Let me pull up the screen here in a second and get his bio. All right, so uh, Dr. Naveed Farooq, he is a specialist in infectious diseases with special interest in skin, lung, kidney, and blood infections. He has worked in Arkansas for VA hospital for three years and earlier was a faculty member at the UTMB hospital uh, in Galveston, Texas for four years. He has been working as a consultant in HCA, UTMB, CH Encompass uh, Rehab Hospitals in the Houston, Texas area for about 15 years. He is currently involved in managing patients with COVID-19 and multi-drug resistant pathogens in Galveston, Texas. Dr. Farooq. Assalamualaikum, brothers and sisters, and uh, Namaspa. And what a great talk by Dr. Muhammad Anif. Uh, he really went into, you know, it's a great, it's a uh, such a vast topic of uh, boosting immunity, and um, you know, and he really took care of uh, most of the concerns people have. But I'm just gonna come uh, towards, uh, you know, how I've been handling this situation with the coronavirus. Uh, as uh, by the time I see my, most of my patients in these hospitals where I do consulting work, uh, these patients are already on oxygen, uh, you know, different levels of oxygen therapy. And uh, some of them are doing actually, um, you know, on breathing machines and whatnot. And I'll try to keep it as simple as possible because I know there are some terminologies uh, when it comes to, um, you know, uh, hospital patients and whatnot, but I'll try to keep it simple. But at the same time, I'd like to also, um, you know, uh, mention that winter time is coming up. And so cold temperatures uh, are definitely uh, one of the reason people get, you know, runny nose. I mean, cold by itself does not cause any uh, problems uh, when it comes to infections or so. But because most people are inside their homes, and they are having runny nose. So what they do, guess what? Some of them who have viruses, they unfortunately touching uh, their noses and then touching tables and other locations where other people come and they touch it also. And that's how the virus uh, goes from one person to another. And so that's uh, one of the reasons, and that's why it's so important uh, to have your immune system uh, in the optimal um, condition and boosting, keep in mind, boosting immunity is uh, not a overnight uh, thing that, you know, you, it takes several months sometimes. So if somebody who's already sick, uh, usually when by the time I see those patients, uh, their immune system is already pretty much suppressed for whatever reason. And uh, like uh, Dr. Anif was mentioning, uh, certain condition which I see personally in hospital especially as we get older, uh, we don't drink um, because we are inside thinking that we don't need enough water. Uh, but keep it in mind, uh, you know, make sure your kidney function is, uh, you know, is optimal too, because you don't want to overload yourself with uh, too much water either. So as long as you're being, uh, you know, being checked by your primary care doctors, to make sure there's no problem with your kidney and liver, because these are all conditions which can cause, um, you know, these are organs which are also involved. And uh, taking any supplements, of course, you want to, if you can, uh, have your levels checked um, before you take, uh, you know, but at the same time, if you take uh, what is recommended doses on most of these supplements, they will be able to, you should be able to uh, handle them 
quite well. So to get a, uh, you know, basically what immunity is, does is, is uh, one of the fastest, multi you know, multiplying uh, system in your body. And uh, what it does, it basically, uh, it's, uh, once I try to fold back the viruses you know, from getting into you, and once they get into you, uh, it helps you to recover fast. That's what immunity does. And like uh, Dr. Anif mentioned, there are a lot of fruits and vegetables uh, like ginger, cloves, garlic, turmeric, and honey, uh, which are quite well uh, been you know recognized to be uh, some of the best uh, you know fruits and vegetables out there. I mean, that's no doubt about that. You know, and I think he went over some of those already. And then also your immune system. Uh, is the defense system of our, um, you know, our body with uh, have different type of cells and proteins to kill these pathogens. So these, let me talk about some of the uh, vitamins. Uh, I'm not going to go into too much detail on these vitamins as we started a little late. So I wanted to leave some time for questions also. Uh, but quickly uh, going over these, uh, some of these vitamins uh, where, uh, you know, uh, how you should take them and what it do for you. Uh, make sure you, when you're taking supplements, uh, they are high quality supplements because there are a lot of supplements are available out there. Um, might not be all organic. So look into the company and uh, whoever is your supplementologist you're talking to, make sure that they are the right uh, person there uh, who has enough knowledge uh, about the company where they're representing. Uh, that is very important key factor. Um, I do personally uh, take supplements myself and some of the supplements I take personally uh, and I believe that has helped me through this uh, whole pandemic times uh, is vitamin C. That is very essential as you know. Vitamin C, I, uh, normally personally I take, again, uh, not everybody has a stomach to handle that much of vitamin C but I do take 1000 milligrams. <laughs> Some people do get some acidity problems, so just keep that in mind. What it does is a, another name for vitamin C is ascorbic acid, and it uh, decreases duration of your cold and flu. Uh, flu season is right around the corner. I hope uh, all the people on this call have already got their flu vaccination, and that is something which is uh, I'm hoping that we'll have something for coronavirus also. And coronavirus is not a virus which was not known, as you um, most of the medical professionals know. Uh, it has been causing, um, you know, infections for the longest period of time. It's just that this COVID-19, which was originally uh, found to be in China, and now had spread all across the world. Um, this is something new, um, and uh, that's what we are still having some challenges with. And right here in Houston, we also found some um, uh, separate strains of COVID-19 also. So that's another concern. But um, hopefully the vaccination is on, uh, coming up pretty soon. But at the same time, some of the supplements which helps, uh, which I take personally and I would recommend, uh, vitamin C, is, which is ascorbic acid, like I mentioned, it increases production of interferons. And what interferons do is fight viral infections. I'm not going to go into too much detail, but uh, other than supplements, uh, if you can handle citrus fruits, blackberries, guava, kiwi, strawberries, uh, red bell peppers, these are some of the uh, you know food supplements you can take, uh, and uh, that should help you uh, with that. And another uh, supplement which I take personally is probiotics, and these probiotics uh, are actually found normally in your gut system which is the largest defense uh, system in your whole body, it has a 70% of your immune system available. As you can imagine, every time you eat food and you know do something like that, a uh, lot of bacteria and viruses go with that inside uh, with the food. Even though when we clean and do our washing, uh, bacteria and viruses can go in there. Uh, fortunately, we have very strong immune system uh, in lining up the whole guts, uh, starting from your stomach, which has, uh, you know, plenty of acid to literally fry anything there. Uh, down there, uh, going down the guts, you have uh, these probiotics, uh, which uh, I take personally and uh, on a regular basis. 
And I believe one of the reasons um, uh, many people uh, who get into trouble, not able to absorb different foods and you know different items is because of that. There are two types of probiotics. One is lactobacillus and uh, bacteriophytes, and these two have different functions. Uh, again, like I said, I'm not gonna go into too much detail, but I would encourage you to get that, um, you know, and you know, learn about those probiotics. Again, uh, quality of these, uh, you know, are essential. You know, what, what probiotics, where are you getting from? But as far as when it comes to natural, of course, uh, yogurt has uh, plenty of uh, probiotic, and that uh, you know. But keep in mind, whenever you are eating yogurt, which has already fruits in it, most likely what they have done is they have put some preservative to keep the fruits uh, in good shape. So they might have already wiped out uh, the uh, the good bacteria. So make sure you get the uh, plain yogurt. You can always add some honey into it. You can always add some uh, fruits. But these are some uh, some of the items which I personally take, vitamin C, probiotic. Also, I do take um, with that multivitamins. Uh, these are with zinc, of course, which is very, very essential. Um, turmeric is another item which I take on a regular basis. Uh, and these are some of the items and some of the other vitamin supplements which I also recommend. Uh, if you are if you are not able to take um, you know all, at least do look into vitamin E, which is uh, which is the most strongest antioxidant, um, has very strong antioxidant properties, and it fights free radicals. Available in walnuts, almonds, peanuts, sunflower seed, and sunflower oil, spinach, and broccoli. So that's another one. And vitamin D uh, is controversial. Uh, but uh, recent studies are showing because people are staying inside and they are not getting enough vitamin D, and that's the time viruses uh, are um, you know affecting your health and whatnot. So make sure you take vitamin D. But some of these uh, fat soluble vitamins, if you do more, they can cause toxicity. So make sure you get your vitamin D level checked before you start taking uh, you know and causing some overdose of vitamin D. Some of these vitamins, which are water soluble, they should not be causing any challenges. Uh, just like a little bit acidity here and there, but nothing serious. But some of the vitamins, which are fat soluble, again because lack of time, I'm not going to go into too much detail on that. Uh, it, uh, you have to be careful what supplements you're taking, and um, uh, you know, for doctors, sometimes sleep is not that easy to come but uh, we'll do you know definitely that's something i also encourage people to get as much as rest as possible with that uh, i would uh, hand it back to imam mustafa thank you dr farooq so far we heard from dr anif regarding the importance of having good eating habits and eating you know, natural food, vegetables and fruits, etc. And Dr. Farooq had uh, explained the importance of uh, vitamins and supplements. We will now turn to Dr. Lakshmi, and she will, inshallah, have uh, her turn and talk about this important subject. But very briefly, Dr. Lakshmi is a pediatrician and a neonatologist and has extensive experience in critical care of premature babies. She practiced as a neonatologist in Westchester Medical Center and Jamaica Hospital in New York. Over the last several years, she has also become an expert on insulin resistance and weight management and is passionate about helping people lead healthier lives by changing their dietary habits. Without any further ado, Dr. Lakshmi, please proceed. Thank you so much, uh, Imam. I appreciate the opportunity to talk. Hello, everyone. Um, this is again Lakshmi, and I am a uh, I'm here as a, just as another person and not as a physician, although those are my credentials. And many of the things I'm going to share today are actually going to be from my own personal experience. Okay, and I'm here going to be talking about women's, women's health. And of course, I'm going to touch upon children's health as well. 
Uh, so uh, we're just going to dive into the slide. All right, so women's health today, I'm really going to talk, talk about two things, you know, stress management and weight management. I mean, there are a lot more details to it. Of course, you heard from Dr. Hanif about the taking care of your foundational supplementation. You spoke, you heard from Dr. Farooq about immunity. So I'm not going to, that applies to everybody, men and women, right? And children as well. So we're just going to talk about a few specific topics because of the current situation. Uh, I know things are different. Uh, so I'm going to, next slide. Yeah, I'm going to talk about, um, yeah, this is something I heard a few years ago. If mommy's not happy, no one's happy. If daddy's not happy, nobody cares, right? Mm -hmm. The reason, we, uh, the reason I put this slide out is because women, you are like the center of everything that happens at home, anywhere. We make decisions on everything. What do we eat? Where do we shop? And how do you keep your house clean? How do you keep, you know, organized? Um, you know, how do you take care of your children? Everything a woman makes a decision. And some of you are probably working as well. And, uh, you know, you may have children of different ages or maybe no children. And of course, there are men who do the work of uh, a mother as well so i'm not disregarding them but uh i'm just talking to the women right now right so it's very important and i always believe that women make the decisions so it's important how you control everything at home det uh, determines everything okay so i'm going to stop talk with the first topic everyone talks about uh oh. sorry the slides were not shared uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, all right. We can go to the next slide. Yeah. Next slide. Next slide. Okay. All right. So, uh, you know, this is uh, just a picture of a woman who does a lot of things, right? Can you uh, sorry. Can you hear us? Yes. Yes. We can hear you. Okay. Okay, sure. Sorry. Uh, so yeah, here's a picture of a woman who actually you know, does everything. Maybe you guys feel like this, you know, cooking, cleaning, laundry, children, you know, whole, uh, husband, maybe in-laws, uh, and even taking care of children. And now the kids are actually at home, uh, you know, probably doing remote learning or they're doing a hybrid and you have to take care of all these things. So you may feel overwhelmed. Okay. And, uh, and I just want to give you a few tips on how to organize yourself, okay? One of the first things, because this is from my own experience, one of the first things I've learned is control only what you can control. Don't worry about your neighbors, your extended family. Don't worry about what's happening on TV or even what's getting forwarded to you on WhatsApp. That's the worst thing. If you're going to waste, uh, not waste, if we are going to be distracted by what's on TV and what's on the social media, it's going to be very hard to function as a human being. It's going to be very hard to take care of your family. And I can tell you, I went through residency in this country for six straight years. I knew nothing that happened. I knew hospital home. During this period, I got married, I had children, and all I did was when I came home, I made sure I cooked, I cleaned, I made sure everything was ready, So, and then everything was taken care of at home, my children, and so if I had to go back to the hospital in the middle of the night, I was available, right? And uh, and I, one of the things I did was I do things in 15-minute blocks. Um, this more than, I figured more than 20 years ago, like if, if I just don't talk to anybody, there was not much social media 20 years ago, not even a proper smartphone. But if I didn't talk to anybody, just focused on that task at hand, like if I have to cook, I only cook, focus on cooking, not talking to anybody or getting on the phone. I finish things much quicker and I was done. You know, honestly, even today I can cook a meal. It will not take more than a maximum 15 minutes is my preparation time. If I have to cook multiple dishes, no more than one, one and a half hours. If I'm, you know, having someone come home and, uh, you know, cleaning, cooking, everything is done. So you have to come up with your own system. But, um, and also the important thing is if your children are work, uh, going to school from home, like remote learning, let the teachers do their job. You don't have to be the mother who's hovering around them, seeing what they're doing. And empower your children to be a little independent. Teach your children to uh, do some household chores. Even a three-year-old child can do a few things at home. So it's very important to empower your children. Okay, and then take time for yourself. Take 15, 20 minutes of time just to relax. I'm not talking about watching uh, TV or uh, reading social media. 
uh, but just to for yourself, maybe meditation, maybe reflection, maybe you like to journal, uh, maybe you like to just simply breathe or just uh, have, you know, I started uh, having growing plants uh, during this lockdown because I was sitting at home. I'm like, I was going crazy that I couldn't go anywhere. I live in New York. So in March was very hot. So in April, I said, I got to do something different. So I always love plants. So I started growing indoor plants. That actually kept me very occupied because your mental health is very, very important. Okay. And also, um, like I said, uh, you know, j just limit the distractions from outside. Only focus on what you can control. And I didn't worry about the world because I could do nothing about it. So this is how I, so it's very simple to do. Okay. And uh, next slide. Uh, and again, don't forget the supplementations and all that that Dr. Farooq and uh, Dr. Hanif spoke about. And yeah, exercise is very, very important. Now, exercise doesn't mean go to the gym and do a one hour and then do nothing all day. That's not what it is. Exercise means just being active all day long how did our grandparents live they were just active throughout the day they're not sitting in the same spot so you can be very very active even if you're working and you have a it job or you're sitting from the computer you can't take a, a break every one hour just to get up climb the stairs up and down right do something just stay active uh, be you know that's very important and um, and i guess like i said good eating habits i'm going to talk about a little more into detail and then stay connected with your family, you know, extended family. And uh, one of the important things, next slide, one of the important things is, um, yeah, how do you, uh, the coronavirus, right? There's so much information coming from, and honestly, I, I don't have TV. I have not watched TV for 18, 18 years, actually. But, you know, when this coronavirus came, obviously, I was like a little anxious because we've never like, gone through a pandemic. But pretty soon, within a day or two, I figured, oh, I'm just going to uh, listen to or read the update from the governor of New York, and that's it. I said, I'm not going to read anything else because I realized the amount of information was coming was really, uh, you know, causing a little bit of fear. You know, I'm talking about me because I usually don't, you know, don't get so scared, afraid of anything. I was like, okay, then I had to pull myself out. I said, okay, let's see. Okay, what is this? Okay, it is a virus. All right. It's, you know, whatever, whatever, whatever it does. But what is, am I doing here? For me, I'm grateful nobody around me is infected. We just have to hand wash absolutely many many times if you have small kids teach them to hand wash many many times even if you they're not going out becomes a habit because children can uh, spread it to the elderly parents or grandparents too okay and number two social distancing i said okay if i go out shopping i just have to be socially distancing a common sense thing and these are things i could control and then i, I have obviously increased my supplementation water intake and be active be active and cut out all the negative information the other good good source would be cdc you know if you want to go there and just read but you know really see what your state recommends but you don't have to know about everything that happens in the world who died who lived it doesn't you know it, it was it wasn't helping me at all because we have extended family in multiple countries and i could not give any negative energy worrying about this uh, covid 19 all i prayed was okay you know what everybody is going to grow through this situation where great things are going to come out of this that's the way to uh, handle anything in life uh, and yeah so and i also write a gratitude journal so i if you write down what are things you're grateful for keeps you grounded that's something i've been doing for a while and that helps me a lot and yeah so these are some of the little tips when you got to find what works for you okay but the yeah. most important thing is so you uh, mentioned about the mask is really important the wearing yeah mask. mask yeah oh yeah i'm sorry did i not mention that you have to wear a mask when you go outside uh it doesn't matter whether it's right or wrong whether the scientific evidence is irrelevant wearing a mask is the simplest thing you can do it is not comfortable i agree uh it, uh, i wear it also I, I go to the grocery store come back quickly waiting to remove the mask in the car but you have to wear it because you know that shows respect to someone else that is very important so if and it is by the way there are some people who believe this whole thing is a hoax it is not guys please i have friends who've seen patients treated them and you saw her dr farooq as well so it is not something it's it is real okay so all the best thing we can do hand wash hand wash repeatedly wear mask and social distancing if you go to the masjid respect the rules of the masjid it's very important because the best way to be show you know that we appreciate god is appreciating the another human being that's what i've learned okay but so i'm sure you guys are all doing wonderful i just as i asked to mention that okay and the children right your children you have to protect what information comes into your children some are older they would go to online so if you have teenagers or a little bit older kids talk to them what they hear online and 
calm them down and again help them stay grounded about the situation because they're going to get information from their friends from the teachers and you have to teach your children to filter the information out it's a very important life skill okay and children also same thing uh keep them active if young kids keep them active i know it's not easy because i have nieces who have young kids nieces and nephews of young children but children are learning a lot so if you're working mom with a young toddler at home you have to sit down and talk to them and set some boundaries for the kids uh, you know and you also of course you have to watch them too because there some of them you got to make sure they're safe but you have to have a good conversation with your child even 2 3 year old children understand a lot so you have to take time to explain to them why this is different and make it fun for them you know spend time with your children 15 minutes teach them a game or play a game with them or teach them to color or paint or something if you have young kids even older kids but you know my children are right now in 20s if i if you ask them what's happening with the current covid they go ma you're the one who uh, you watches all this we don't even know what's happening because they are very focused on what they're doing in their task and i just go look to make sure my daughter's college had no covid and you know god's grace they don't have that's why i start reading the dashboard like because you know one month they're doing fantastic so yeah so just uh, you know be always confident and positive no matter what all right and the next slide yeah the next slide is about weight man- management i was asked to talk about this because of my personal experience of reversing what we call insulin resistance i was diagnosed with diabetes in 2012 i was 149 pounds now i weigh about 128 but i am actually uh, sh- uh, you know my waist size has gone down my size has gone down as, as well i went from size 12 to size 6 right now in a suit right but um but i had to you know i don't know how much time i have but listen i'm going to sh- shorten this thing um weight management is like honey for deep mentioned a lot of the things you know uh, we we got heavy at least i got heavy because i was eating processed food i came from india at 25 years of age i had only homemade whole food you know i never had you know good oil and refined oil and all that but i came to us i was just eating in the cafeteria which is in a six months period in detroit like she started my life in detroit 6 months i gained 50, uh, 10 pounds because i was eating cafeteria food and always on call the the call it wasn't the call the reason i gained weight is because of food i was eating and i didn't know any better but you know 10 12 years in this country it was enough for me to become diabetic and pack on like 40 some pounds something like that when i you know since i came to us it's because of eating all the time or whenever i wanted to because i was i was snacking in the hospital because there was always chocolates and cakes and coffee with sugar all the time in the hospital i used to 24 hour shifts so i thought i deserved to eat so i was always eating so that's how i gained weight so the best way what i've learned is um, i know this slide is talks about uh, about hormonal uh, obesity because the biggest reason why we all gain weight is because of insulin insulin actually if you keep eating constantly it'll stimulate insulin constantly and if insulin is high it will cause inflammation every cell in the body that means you will get infected very easily forget about covid other things will get you right you will not fall very sick but you'll have cold you have allergies you'll have all these things okay which i also been through actually right um but but once you lower your if you stop eating constantly eat like your grandparents did or even like the prophet did eat only two to three good meals a day whole foods like i have mentioned that already i'm not going to repeat it but eat consciously and eat uh, you know give thanks to the food but don't eat processed food too much yeah even i like once in a while sweet we all do but it's okay but eat in moderation right and the next slide um there's something called visceral fat which is actually when the insulin level is high because we're constantly eating there's increased fat deposition around your uh, pancreas and liver right which you cannot see this is not the fat you see outside the fat that you cannot see that increases your risk for everything diabetes to hypertension to stroke to everything right and how did i overcome next right how did i overcome that honey faulty touched on this very uh, what we usually recommend people is have if you're an adult you only need two good meals with natural fats and if you eat two good meals with adequate amount of fat natural fat does not hurt hurt you harm you okay it's actually good fats uh we feed you won't be hungry as much you should not be hungry two good meals and have a good 16 hours between your dinner and the breakfast just by doing that i lost dress sizes and i ate actually two to three good meals and then that's a very powerful thing and uh you got you can look it up you know online and you can actually go a lot of resources online that will talk to you more about this and the simplest thing is to how do you figure out what to eat um is um something called a plate method 
you know, take a plate, fill up, fill up your plate. Fifty percent of the plate should be greens, greens vegetables of the, you know, good vegetables, not uh, potatoes, but non-starchy vegetables. And one fourth, or even a little bit more, like thirty percent, could be just uh, any protein. and the rest is grains and lentils that's how you balance and of course i have an adequate uh, if you like olive oil add a uh, generous olive oil i like ghee so you can add ghee uh, if you like coconut oil you can do that or it could be avocados it could be eggs whole eggs right these are all fats that are very important needed for us so these little things actually will help you uh, shift balance towards lowering your insulin so if you're not if you don't weigh what you did in your 18 years of age provided you were not overweight at 18 years of age okay then you're having insulin resistance that happens years decades before you become diabetic so i ignored it i assumed it was you know i'm a doctor i know everything about diabetes i thought it's not a big deal but i know it was a big deal because when i hit me it hit me with so much exhaustion i was i just couldn't, couldn't didn't know what to do uh, that is it's a good thing it happened for me because because of that i started seeking solution and i actually read a great book by um uh ray strand dr ray strand it's called what your doctor does not know about nutritional supplements is killing you that book changed the way i looked at supplementation that was in 2012 or 2013 i believe then i started uh, changing my supplementation i also started looking for a solution for my diabetes that's when i came across intermittent fasting and the benefits and today my life is totally different i have more energy i'm not in my 40s uh, you know my son is 24 so i'm little older than that but i tell you what we have so much energy that i did not have in my 20s and 30s And, I, and I'm, I'm actually, honestly, honey, for I'm in great health right now. So yeah, so I hope that helps. And um, yeah, with that, we are done. Uh, back to. Oh, by the way, uh, if you have any questions, uh, uh, please send email to myhealthiona at gmail dot com. Right. With that, uh, maybe honey for. Sure. Okay. I just want to add you. one uh, quick uh, uh, minute about the significance of hand wash. Simple, three simple things: hand washing. and wearing a mask and social distancing it's so critical i see when i go to the masjid brothers that you know just seemingly you know of course you know we pray we take care of everything but we need to do the basic things as well uh and i see so many of our brothers instead of wearing the mask as a mask is like a chin strap right <laughs> it's meant to go over your nose it should cover your nose and make sure that it is appropriately used and not as a chin strap so very simple Techniques will go a long, long, long way in making sure that we stay healthy. And with that, I will turn it back to uh, uh, Brother Mustafa. Thank you so much for the opportunity, and we are available uh, and happy to take any questions. Thank you so much, doctors, for uh, your presentations. I do have a few questions here. I have the first question to Dr. Hanif. The question is: It is recommended to drink one gallon of water. would coffee tea uh, energy drinks etc count toward the required daily amount only after you finish the one gallon <laughs> <laughs> okay uh, so it is good to uh, we, the stimulants are okay i would definitely limit the caffeine intake to maybe two cups a day one in the morning one in the evening and not those venti size cups that you buy in starbucks you know they have equivalent of like 10 cups of coffee in them the caffeine so you know decent reasonable amounts of caffeine is good um energy drinks you know super careful about the kind of energy thing you're putting in your body because there are a lot of sugar in them so uh, make sure that you're reading the labels and reading the content of what's in those energy drinks there are healthy alternatives available but you should be careful about those but uh, the uh, the straight answer uh, 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 mustafa is that uh, water is not replaced by any of those other things so we need to get adequate amount of water Great, thank you. I have a question for Dr. Farooq. If you eat vegetables and fruits and good organic food, do you still need to take vitamins? Thank uh, you for that question. Uh, great question, um, whoever has asked. And uh, I still have to find one person who takes nine, eight to nine servings of fruits and vegetables. I haven't found anybody in Texas. Maybe there's somebody in uh, Michigan or New York. <laughs> there might be exceptions out there, but personally, I have not seen. But yes, if you are getting organic fruits and vegetables, they're a little bit expensive, but uh, that's what I would recommend to get uh, organic fruits and vegetables. 
from good source. Make sure they are clean properly. Uh, and, uh, you know, then you, you don't know how long, just like uh, Dr. Neff was saying, some potatoes can be sitting there for a year or so, and uh, you don't realize that you're consuming some, some of those supplements, I mean, some of those fruits which have been, uh, have no food value actually in, into that. So you have to be careful to make sure that you're taking them fresh as they come out and, uh, and organic if it is possible because they don't have any preservative and insecticides and all those things. So hopefully they are the best possible, uh, you know, that you can take. But uh, it's, it's very challenging. I tried a few times. Uh, I failed miserably. And uh, I know, there, you know, there are a few other people who I know who gave me the challenge that they're going to do it. But it's, it, I haven't seen one yet who can <laughs> eat, eat eight to nine servings of fruits and vegetables. Well, I join you. I join you in this. Uh, I I eat good food. Alhamdulillah. I try to mix uh, uh, vegetables and fruits and uh, eat organic food. And I was uh, really not anti-vitamins, but I didn't really believe that vitamins would work until I uh, began uh, taking them, because I take a group with me for Hajj every year. Uh, for the last 10, uh, 12 years. Those who have gone uh, for Hajj uh, know the terminology or the uh, uh, Hajj flu, we call it, where uh, you don't have social distancing, of course, particularly in the Haram when you are doing Tawaf and everybody is, uh, uh, you know, uh, compacted and you get the flu from other people through various ways and means. And in the last couple of years, ever since I started taking vitamins, in addition to my good uh, eating habit, uh, that really changed uh, a whole lot. Uh, uh, last year, I hardly had uh, the flu. I had a scratchy throat for about a couple of days at the end of the season, and it went away within a couple of days. So uh, I'm a testimony to, to, I believe in vitamins now. I truly believe in taking those as a supplement. Uh, just like you said, uh, Brother uh, Mustafa, I, I've been, you know, being an infectious disease doctor. You know, even when the coronavirus started, the regulations of masks and all those were not there. So I was walking into the rooms, not even realizing some of these patients have that. And, uh, you know, because I've been taking these supplements myself on a very regular basis, Alhamdulillah, uh, uh, even though my test for antibody came back positive, but uh, I didn't have any symptoms at all. So I went through the whole thing uh, at my age. You know, uh, most people who get it, uh, you know, in their 50s, they get into trouble uh, much, much faster. Alhamdulillah, I didn't have any challenge. And being an infectious disease doctor, I get exposed to all the viruses all the time, um, especially working in multiple hospitals. So. I think I believe in these supplements. They are if you take it the right supplements, and don't take them, you know, the cheap. Uh, I mean, nothing wrong with cheap, but it's just the quality. Unfortunately, they are sometimes they are not the best. So, just take the right ones. Talk to your supplementologist; it will help. I think the key thing here is to take uh, organic uh, vitamins. I agree. And we All should right. look for vitamins that are made from whole plant concentrates. That's the key. Uh, variable to look for because so people claim organic and a lot of stuff but they should look for whole plant concentrates and they're good, uh, good uh, sources available yeah so. also look for nsf certified that certifies that what's on the label is what is in your tablet it's very important yeah okay great i do have a question for you dr lecture me somebody asked uh, do you recommend vaccination when the vaccination for covid 19 becomes available <laughs> wow. I think um, that should I be a question for question Dr. Farouk. Dr. Farouk, actually. <laughs> I would probably take it. <laughs> he is the expert. No, I Dr. think Farouk. there's a varying uh, opinion. I think Dr. Farouk is the yeah, expert. As long as it's approved by CDC and, uh, you know, <laughs> we'll, uh, we'll definitely recommend, especially starting with a high-risk professional like myself and then, uh, you know, going down ways. So I, I'm, I'm actually, I'll be more than happy to get one myself. I already got my flu vaccination. So many people have this fear of getting flu vaccine and getting sick after that. 
but i think it's uh, mostly in their mind that uh, because uh, you know even though the virus is there but it's, a, it's not a live virus so uh, you you should take your vaccination uh, that can save uh, maybe not maybe you might not get any problems but uh, then you can give it to somebody else and that's why vaccinations are so important i must confess to you dr farooq that i used to every time i take a flu shot i get the flu and I get it very, very, very bad. It's like they inject flu into you to immune you from the flu. So I stopped taking it, but with my vitamins, I'm doing okay. What's your uh, response to that? Yeah, I mean, uh, I do both. I do take supplements, uh, I believe in them, and I've been taking them religiously for some time. Uh, and But I do at the same time, some people have allergies to some of the, uh, you know, and sometimes what happens is that right at the time when they were getting the vaccination, unfortunately, they might have contracted the flu also. So at that point, because you don't have the antibodies, it takes about a few days before you can develop the antibodies. Uh, so you, it, it doesn't happen that the day you get injection, you get, it might be some of the symptoms, you know, maybe a little bit fever, thing people have developed, but sometimes people have uh, allergies to some of those components in that vaccination. And that can cause you flu-like symptoms. All right, Dr. Hanif, uh, how about natural black seed uh, and uh, honey? And they say black seed is, which the Prophet uh, وسلم, recommended that we take black seed. There is healing in it. And there are a lot of, uh, you know, WhatsApp videos, among other things, encourage taking black seed and honey. It's an absolutely great uh, uh, additional uh, food that we need to take. Uh, we believe in it. We take it in different forms. And obviously, we use it in a lot of our cooking as well. But we have the oil also that we use. So I think it's an excellent addition to uh, pretty much everything uh, that you're doing. Um, so we, I would highly recommend that. Uh, yes, and I do the same. I, I do take that black seed also myself and honey too, daily. Okay, very good. The last question I have here, unless uh, our viewers have any questions. By the way, uh, even uh, when the event is over, you could still send your questions to myhealthiona at gmail.com and we'll forward your questions to our esteemed doctors uh, to respond to your questions. We'll send you the reply, inshallah. The last question I have here is, uh, many people say that the COVID-19 is a hoax. How do you respond to that? <laughs> is it I think hoax? they need to come to the hospitals uh, and see if you, uh, you yeah. know. I think that's the best thing I can tell you. Uh, they need to be in hospital to see what's going on. Unfortunately, many hospitals are on shutdown because, uh, you know, they are not able to see patients. But uh, if anybody has any question, they can send me a privately, you know, through this Iona uh, email system, and I'll I'll be more than happy to talk to them because it's such a lengthy and emotional thing for me because uh, actually some of my doctor friends, um, I don't want to disclose the name, but uh, a 29-year-old doctor right in one of the hospitals I work at, she passed away. Uh, so it's very emotional and it's very uh, disturbing see even healthy young people getting it. So please do not take it lightly. Just like Dr. Anif and Lakshmi said, please do wash your hands, wear masks, and whatever social distancing you have to do, do it and take it seriously. Don't take it lightly till we have some solution to this. We don't have any treatment at this time other than supplementation. You can increase your immunity, uh, but do not take it lightly. I could right. add a thought to that, uh, Brother Mustafa. I think uh, this part, this sort of thought process is really a symptom of uh, uh, over uh, overconsumption of information out there. There is information from everybody and everybody in, in this country and around the world has the right to express whatever they believe. So it's important that we're able to sift the facts from the opinions. And uh, I would recommend that if you do want to get updated on a periodic basis, which you should be updated, it's not Fox News, it's not your TV stations, it's not your you know, internet Google search engines that are going to give you the absolutely validated information. Look for your own state's individual uh, uh, recommendations that are well thought out, 
uh, if you're not sure which state to follow, follow New York State. <laughs> we have a proven track record of effectively <laughs> controlling it with good leadership. It's all about using common sense, right? And Correct. I. In one more, put a plug in. Especially, I was very excited when the masjids opened up. My fear was that they would get shut down because brothers and sisters don't follow the basic guidance. Because you know, either we are carried away with our exuberance in faith. Uh, faith is good, you know. You know, there's a hadith that says, you know, you can even when you go to sleep, you know, you tie the camel. You know, you pray, but you tie the camel down. Right. You go. So we've got to do what we need to do. The very three simple things, you know, washing your hands every chance you get. Like every time you go in and out. Use the hand sanitizer or wash, um, and uh, masks and distancing. Uh, absolutely, these are three things that have been shown to reduce and bend the curve, and this is something that we owe to ourselves, and it's a responsibility, not just to ourselves but to everybody around us, that uh, you know we take that responsibility seriously. So, just stop cluttering your brain with information that is not validated and people's opinions, but uh, keep it simple. Go to credible sources and then shut down the information. Yeah. Also, I want to add to that, Masood. Uh, another guy thing that I follow. Everyone also better to follow. If I go outside in a grocery store, wherever if I'm there, even for thirty minutes, I come home. I, I change my clothes. I go straight to the bathroom, change my clothes. I wash my hair. I have a shower and come with fresh clothes, even with a mask. That's something I've been doing from the beginning, and actually came from my daughter. She insisted we do all that, so we started doing that too. And I, I we don't go out a whole lot, but when we do, we make sure it's a very important precaution. So yeah, and it's right. real for us. It's, it's very real. real. It's real. We've lost people. But we can too. control it with simple things. Yes. Yeah, it it is real. I gave a khutbah on this. Uh, COVID nineteen is not a hoax. It is of course uh, real. And uh, viewers, you did hear what the doctors say, and this is what we stress here at Iona, uh, wearing a mask, uh, social distancing, and washing your hands often. Uh, these are the three key things to remain healthy, inshallah ta'ala. I uh, appreciate our community here who are adhering to those rules. Uh, everybody comes here to pray uh, wearing masks. They bring their prayer mats and uh, we are separated by the six feet social distancing uh, recommendation from CDC and the government. And alhamdulillah, we have uh, not had any case yet over here and hopefully we continue to follow those guidelines and be safe uh, here. Uh, everyone should uh, take their precautions uh, to remain safe and healthy. Health is uh, and safety is our number one priority, and we will continue to do whatever we can to protect ourselves and preserve ourselves from this deadly disease, the coronavirus. On behalf of the Iona community, I would like to thank our esteemed doctors for sharing their thoughts with us, and I would like to thank our viewers for watching. Thank you. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you all, bless your families. May Allah keep us all safe and healthy and may he relieve us from this deadly disease, the coronavirus, very soon. Inshallah. Jazakumullahu khairan. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.